Lesson 4.1, secondary trigonometric ratios. So from previous courses, uh, I think grade 10, you start working with primary trig ratios in triangles. And grade 11, you do more of that. So the primary trig ratios are sine, cosine, and tangent. And they are the ratio. Sine is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse, the length of the opposite side over the length of the hypotenuse side. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So katoa. The secondary trigonometric ratios are the reciprocals of the primary ratios. So uh, secondary trig ratios are the reciprocals. of the primary trig ratios. What does that mean? That means if you take a primary trig ratio and you flip it, instead of sine being opposite over hypotenuse, if you take that ratio and you flip it and it becomes hypotenuse over opposite, then you have the secondary trigonometric ratio that is the reciprocal of its primary trigonometric ratio. So the three of them are called cosecant. Co should learn how to spell. Cosecant. Secant. And cotangent. All right, what are they? Well, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So we say cosecant of angle theta is equal to, instead of sine, which is op over hype, we have hypotenuse over opposite, which is equal to one over the sine of theta. That means it's the reciprocal of the sine ratio secant, which is S-E-C for short, the secant of theta it is the reciprocal of cosine. So it is the ratio of the length of the hypotenuse over the length of the adjacent side, and it's the reciprocal of cosine, so it's 1 over cos. Cotangent, C-O-T theta, the cotangent of a given angle. It's the reciprocal of tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So we're looking at adjacent over opposite. And it's 1 over the tangent of angle theta. So these are the reciprocal ratios. Okay, the reciprocal ratios, secondary trig ratios are reciprocal of the primary trig ratios. This is how they relate to one another. And we'll be using that information. Okay, the next thing to know about trigonometric ratios is that each of them, so now we have six of them, three primary, three secondary, each trigonometric ratio has a corresponding ratio. Each trig ratio has a corresponding ratio. Corresponding ratio. Their values, this is how we get the property of a corresponding uh, angle, corresponding ratio, sorry. Their values are equal when their angle measures, their values, I've got to spell my words right. Their values are equal when their angle measures add to 90 degrees. Okay, so if you had uh, an angle of let's say 12 degrees and you took one of the trig ratios of that angle, if you took an angle of 78 degrees and you took its corresponding trig ratio, 
then the value of the ratio used here would be the same as the corresponding value, corresponding ratio used here. Uh, that'll make more sense when we apply it in real situations. So here are, is the list of corresponding ratios and they're easier to remember because they have uh, the prefix co in front of each of them. So the corresponding one for sine is cosine. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of 90 minus theta. So again, if you had the sine of 78, that's the exact same as the cosine of 12, 90 minus 78. So the sine of 78 is the same as cosine of 12, or the sine of uh, 20 is the same as the cosine of 70. One easy way, one to remember is uh, if you take an angle of 45 degrees, well, you know that the sine of 45 is the same as the cosine of 45. They're both one over radical two. We learned that from our special angles lesson a little while ago. Okay, cosine. What is the corresponding ratio for cosine? Well, it's sine. So the cosine of theta is equal to the sine of 90 minus theta. Okay, uh, we're going through the list with the primaries right here. So tangent, its corresponding one is cotangent. Uh, don't write that though. Tan of theta equals cotangent of 90 minus theta. So this unit is a lot about remembering the properties and remembering these corresponding and related uh, trig ratios. This is the primary trig ratios. And then we get into our list of secondary trig ratios. We've got cosecant. He corresponds to secant. So the secant, uh, sorry, I'm writing these things wrong. Cosecant of theta equals the secant of 90 minus theta. Then we have the secant, which we already know. The secant of theta is equal to the cosecant of 90 minus theta. And we have our cotangent. Cotangent of theta is then equal to a tangent of 90 minus theta. Okay, so two different things to remember. One set is the reciprocal ratios. That's the secondary trig ratio that matches the primary trig ratio is the reciprocal of a particular primary trig ratio. And then you have these uh, corresponding trig ratios. Sine and cosine are a team. Tangent and cotangent are a team. Cosecant and secant are a team. One way to remember it is sine, cosine, right? They both have a, the one has a co in front of it. Tangent, cotangent. Secant, cosecant, as in correlated to secant or correlating with cotangent, correlating with tangent. Cosine, correlating with sine. Sorry, corresponding. I'm using the wrong word now. Corresponding. Anyway, example one applies uh, that really simply. So example one, given a trigonometric ratio, find the angle of the corresponding ratio. So if we know that the cosecant of the angle 10, we just need to find which uh, is its corresponding ratio. Well, secant is its corresponding ratio. So we know that the cosecant of 10 degrees is going to be equal to the secant of 90 minus 10 degrees. So that's the secant of 80 degrees. And our goal is to find the angle of the corresponding ratio. So the angle of the corresponding ratio that gives the same value is just 80 degrees, okay? So therefore, the angle 
of the corresponding ratio is 80 degrees. B. We're looking for the sine of 12 degrees. Well, the sine of 12 degrees is equal to the cosine of 90 minus 12, which is the cosine of 78 degrees. Therefore, 78 degrees is the angle of theta uh, is the measure of the angle of the corresponding ratio. Okay, those ones are pretty straightforward. All right, uh, example two, determine the six trigonometric ratios of angle theta. And angle theta is formed by plotting point P on our little grid here, point P at one, negative two. So maybe down here somewhere, so we can draw that terminal arm. And we're always going to form a right triangle from the x-axis. So what we have here, what we know, is that we have angle theta in here. We have one across the change in x, and negative two is the change in y. So we have, from angle theta, we have the adjacent side, and we have the opposite side. If I just kind of note that, we have adjacent and we have op. We do not yet have the height, but we can find it, okay? And we need to find it in order to uh, get all of our six trigonometric ratios for angle theta. So, in order to find out what the hypotenuse is, we're just using Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The two legs are 1 and negative 2. 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. That gives us 5 over here. So we've got C squared equals 5, which means C equals radical 5. Okay, we're always going to use exact values here. You're not going to ever reduce this to a decimal, you're always going to use exact values. So we are going to just put that in our diagram. Radical 5 is the hypotenuse. And now we can use our primary trig ratios, so Katoa. So Katoa. In order to get our list of primary trig ratios, sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. And then in order to get your secondary trig ratios, you really are just taking the reciprocal of each of these, flipping it upside down, okay? So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's negative two over radical five. So throw your negative sign out front, negative two over radical five. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's one over radical five. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. That's negative two over one, which is simply negative two. And then we can use that information to get our reciprocal uh, trig ratios. So we've got the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So instead of negative two over radical five, we're gonna have radical five over negative two. But to reduce it, you can keep that negative out front radical 5 over 2. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. You'll be memorizing these relationships. Cosine is 1 over radical 5, so the reciprocal of that is just radical 5 over 1, which is radical 5. And the cotangent, the reciprocal of negative 2, is negative 1 over 2. Okay? There you have it. That is getting all six trig ratios. Uh, all we were given was the point of P 
down here at 1, negative 2. We use that information, the x and the y, in order to get our hypotenuse so that we could apply our primary trig ratios, and then we took the reciprocals for our secondary trig ratios. Okay, example uh, one, it's called in your book. Uh, basically applying these ratios to uh, a somewhat real world situation. So we have Ravinder, he's flying a kite at the end of a 50 meter string. Flying a kite at the end of a 50 meter string. The sun is directly overhead and the string makes an angle of 30 degrees with the ground. So if we give ourselves a little diagram, let's put ourselves in a Cartesian grid and at first it is making an angle of 30 degrees with the ground so maybe looking something like that it is 50 meters long so we know we have 30 degrees here and we have a length of 50 meters the wind speed increases and then the kite flies higher until the string makes an angle of 60 degrees with the ground. So now we're looking at a new line. It's still 50 meters because it's the same kite with the same string. But now our angle is 60 degrees. we need to determine an exact expression for the horizontal distance that the shadow of the kite moves between the two positions. So we have a sun shining. It says the sun is shining straight above. Okay, you don't necessarily need to draw the sun. But there it is. And it's casting a shadow straight down, that means, okay? So a dotted line to finish off our right triangle here from position one and then we have a dotted line straight down to finish off our triangle from position two. Okay, and we want it determine an exact expression for the horizontal distance that the shadow moves from position one to position two. So we have two x values that we're working on. We have x1 corresponding to position one, and we have x subscript two corresponding to the end of the shadow when the kite is at position two. And basically what we wanna find is the distance between them an exact expression for the distance between them. Okay, so let's use the exact values for the trigonometric ratios for the two angles that we have, okay? So we have two angles here. I'm gonna do it in pink and in blue. So for position one, for position one, we, uh, the x distance, so from the origin all the way to the end here is going to be represented by the cosine of 30 degrees, okay? So position one, the shadow has a length that's equal to the cosine of 30 degrees. I'm gonna just write that note. The shadow has a length equal to the cosine of 30 degrees. Well, cosine of 30 degrees, we're working on memorizing our unit circle. Uh, the cosine of 30 degrees has an exact value of, in this case, we can just use our, our Soka Toa. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's adjacent, that's the side that we need, and hypotenuse is 50. 
So we've got x1 over 50. In order to get the value of x1, we simply multiply both sides by 50. So we end up with x1 equals 50 times the cosine of 30. But we know that from our unit circle, the exact value of the cosine of 30 is actually radical 3 over 2. So I'm going to do that step first. Sorry, you have to erase. So we're going to substitute radical 3 over 2 for the cosine of 30 degrees. And then the other side of our ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, now we multiply both sides by 50. I'm going to switch x1 to the left here. We end up with 50 radical 3 over 2. We can reduce this uh, because we can divide this whole numerator by 2 and we end up with instead of 50 radical 3s over 2 we get 25 radical 3s. We cut our radical 3s in half. So x1 is equal to 25 radical 3. Okay we want an exact expression so we're not going to turn that into a decimal. From position 2 Okay, same thing applies, except this time the shadow length, shadow length, hold on, this is not true what I wrote, because the cosine of 30 is, is this, that's not true. Okay, the shadow length here is x2. And uh, the cosine of 60 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's x2 over hypotenuse, which is 50 still, 50 meters. That's the string. The cosine of 60 from your unit circle is equal to 1 half. So we have 1 half equals x2 over 50. You can multiply both sides by 50. 50 times 1 half is 25. You can do it in two steps. You do 50 over 2. x2 equals 25. So now to get the distance, the horizontal distance from position 1 to position 2, all we need to do is subtract the x-coordinates, subtract these values from one another. So the distance or the difference is going to be x1 minus x2. Just 25 radical 3 minus 25. Uh, and if we wanted to factor that out into its simplest form, you could factor out 25 from both terms. You get 25, and then in brackets, radical 3 minus 1. And we're dealing with meters. And then uh, section B says get an approximation for that distance to the nearest tenth of a meter. So you just type that in your calculator, 25 times radical 3, or radical 3 times 25, and then subtract 25, and you will get that the distance is approximately 18.3 meters. So that's right here. Last one says, unit, use the unit circle to determine the exact values of the six trigonometric ratios for an angle of 135 degrees. So all you're going to do on your circle there is draw an angle of 135 degrees. So think about where that might be. If we go from our initial arm and we go 90 degrees and add 45 more. Then right there, 
we've created an angle right, of 135 degrees. It intersects the unit circle at point P. And if we're going to discuss uh, the primary trig ratios, we want to, so this angle is now uh, sketched in what we call standard position. It goes from the x-axis counterclockwise, 135 degrees. And basically we're going to create a triangle again. We're always working in triangles. So we're creating a triangle by drawing a line straight down back to the x-axis. It's going to be a 90 degree triangle. And now there's something that we already know about this in the unit circle. We know the point P. It's a mirror of the point that would be right here with a 45 degree angle, which we know has coordinates of 1 over radical 2, 1 over radical 2. Over here, the mirror image of that point P has the same Y coordinate, but the X coordinate is negative. So we're looking at negative 1 over radical 2, comma radical 2. Okay, so we know two of the lengths already then. We know that the distance, this leg, is negative 1 over radical 2. And we know that the height is 1 over radical 2, which means that we can use the, uh, we don't even really need the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, we need to get the hypotenuse. Um, no, we don't even need to. It's even easier. So the sine of 135 corresponds to is the y value. And the cosine of 135 is the value of the x coordinate. And the tangent of 135 degrees is y over x or sine over cosine. Maybe we could write that either way. If you need this, then you write this sine of 135 over the cosine of 135, which is just y over x. So sine of 135 is the y coordinate, 1 over radical 2. The cosine of 135 degrees is the x coordinate negative 1 over radical 2. The tangent of 135 is y over x. So it's going to look ugly. y is 1 over radical 2 over x, which is 1 over radical 2. Uh, negative, though. And this is just a value over itself with one negative factor, so the tangent of 135 is negative 1. From there, it's easier to get the secondary trigonometric ratios. Secondary, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, which instead of being equal to the value of y is equal to the value of 1 over y. So you just take the reciprocal of what you got for sine, which gives us radical 2. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. It's 1 over x. So we get negative radical 2. Cotangent of 135 is the reciprocal of tangent. So it's just x over y, or the reciprocal of negative 1, which is negative 1. Okay, so in this situation, we didn't even have to get the hypotenuse, because we know that uh, the relationship within the unit circle of these coordinates with the value of sine and the value of cosine along the x-axis.